Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today's discussion topic is cluster analysis in R. Basically, it's a technique in which the data is agglomerated into groups that are more similar, meaningful and useful. It is used in wide, wide variety of disciplines which includes pattern recognition, image analysis, information retrieval, bioinformatics and data compression. There is a difference between factor analysis and cluster analysis. The basic difference is that a factor analysis is a data reduction technique while cluster analysis is a classification technique. I will explain this by a very simple example. Let's go in the script of R and let's run the data file empty cars. When I'll run it, I'll get the data frame. Now when I'm clubbing the variables, it is known as factor analysis. In other words, if three or four variables represent one factor or three or four statements represent a factor, it is known as a factor analysis. But when I'm clubbing the cases like this way, row wise, this is column wise, when I'm clubbing the cases like this on the basis of their similar characteristics, it's known as cluster analysis. This is the difference between both these techniques. What are the methods which are available for uh, cluster analysis? In this, we are having a hierarchical clustering. In that also, we are having two methods. In hierarchical clustering, we are having two methods. One is agglomerative method and another is a divisive method. In case of agglomerative, the algorithm works by combining n objects into group, while in case of divisive method, n objects are separated into finite groups. This I will explain by a very simple chart. You can see here, A, B, C, D, we go on dividing it, it is a divisive method. But when we go on merging it, it is an agglomerative method. What's the first step in the uh, cluster analysis? It is to generate the scatter plot. Let's again go in the script and try to run scatter plot. First, I will attach the empty cards. I will plot it. And you can see there is some clustering which is happening when there are only two variables, D rate and MPG. Some clustering is there, cluster 1, cluster 2, and cluster 3. But this is a, this is possible when we are only having two statements or rather two variables but when we want to make the clusters of based on many variables we will have to use the technique of cluster analysis the second step is the normalization by normalization i mean that that in your data set it may be possible that some of the variables see here displacement is in three digit vs and am is in one digit i want to normalize it so what I'll do is I'll first of all calculate the mean. The command line will be M apply empty cars to mean. Those who are not aware about the apply command, you can refer to my video data manipulation in R. So this command will calculate the mean of all the variables column wise. Similarly, I'll calculate the standard deviation of all the variables. Then I will do the normalization with the help of the command Z scale empty cars m and s so i will get the normalized data frame you can see here this is a normalized data frame 0 0.1508 cylinder minus 0 0.104 displacement minus 0 0.570 now there is a one shortcut method also in which you can write down z scale empty cars and directly it will normalize your data again you can refer you can see the data frame it will give you the same output see after the normalization is completed you will have to calculate the distance between these variables uh, not that uh, between the variables uh, distance between these cases okay on the basis of euclidean distance so for this i'll be using the command line hc.c it's just a name uh, sorry not this one this one yeah distance distance z run it and it will give me the distance between all the cases that is between the cars now if the distance is large it means that this cars that i are having dissimilar characteristics yes i again repeat see i'll take one example here i'll just take one example here if you see this 8.817 mass rating when compared with honda civic both these cars are having a far apart characteristics or features. But if the distance is small, say for example this one, it means that these this, uh, cars are sharing similar 
more or less similar characteristics. Okay, so what the interpretation will be? You will have to interpret this way. First of all, you will have to calculate the Euclidean distance. So the Euclidean distance between Maserati and Toyota is 8.061, which means that these cars are quite dissimilar to each other, while Euclidean distance between Lincoln and Cadillac is 0 0.296, which means that these cars are quite similar to it, each other. Now, when we will plot the dendrograms, one thing is very much sure that Lincoln Continental and Cadillac Fleetwood very will be very nearer to each other because the dendrograms are plotted on the basis of the Euclidean distance. What's a, what's a simple meaning of Euclidean distance? Let's understand by this distance matrix. See, if, if I say Milwaukee and Chicago, the distance between these two is very small, 92 kilometers. So when I'll generate a dendrogram, this Chicago and Milwaukee will be very nearer to each other. But when I say about St. Louis and Detroit, they are far apart. And therefore on dendrogram, they will be far, far apart. Now, in cluster analysis, we are having some linkage method for calculating the distance between the two clusters. One of the method is a single linkage in which minimum distance is considered between the two cases. Minimum distance, cluster one and cluster two. In second method, there is a complete linkage which considers the farthest distance between the two clusters. And the third one is the average linkage. We will see everything one by one. Let's go in the script. Now we have to convert this distance into plot. So the command line will be plot hc.c and run. So you can see one thing. Oh, just a minute. I have not run it. Okay, one, two. On right hand side, you are getting the dendrograms. Now what this means, see, this is one cluster, two cluster, three cluster. So Hornet and Masrethi, Hornet and Masrethi, they are having very much dissimilar characteristics. But Hornet, Ford Drive and Valiant, they are having a very similar characteristics and in the dendrogram, they have been shown very nearer to each other. To make this output much more organized, I can use one more line or rather one more argument in the previous command, hc.c hang minus one. You can see on right hand side, the things have become much more organized compared to the previous output. Now, when you don't specify anything here, then the algorithm which will be used is algorithm will use a complete linkage method to your specify uh, average you will have to use method is equal to average run run and now i'll get a different cluster now i want to compare the clusters which are formed according to the average method and the uh, complete linkage so what i'll do is i'll run the command member.c cut tree hc.c member.a cut tree hc dot a now what this command line is cut tree i'll run help command you can see on right hand side i'm specifying the tree and i'm specifying that in how many groups you want to divide or how many clusters it is having so i'll run it one two and then i'll form the table of both this membership cluster membership table now, according to the average cluster, three, three cluster solutions we have considered. According to the complete linkage also, we have considered three cluster solution. One thing which you should observe is there are three such cases which, which according to the average cluster, they should be in the cluster one. And according to the complete linkage, ac see, according to the average linkage and according to the average linkage, both uh, confirm that these three cases should be in cluster one. But there is some, you can say, uh, some 15 cases are such that complete linkage is saying that it should be in second cluster and the average linkage is saying that it should be in first cluster. In third one, there are 12 such cases such that according to uh, complete uh, linkage, it is, it is saying that it should be in third cluster and the average linkage says that it should be in uh, second cluster. Okay. Now, which are the variables which are significantly contributing towards forming the cluster, we will have to understand this by running a small command aggregate z, z is this normalized, uh, normalized data, we will enter this z, then list member.c and mean. Now those variables whose means are very nearer to each other, see this is cluster 1, 2, 3 and basically you can consider this as a centroids. If the centroids are very nearer to each other, 
then this variable is not at all contributing towards the cluster formation. Okay, let's see one thing. Uh, if you see carefully, yeah, you see Vs, the distance between these three centroids, they are more or less nearer to each other, minus 0.86 and 0.98. But see the carb, carburetor, number of carburetors. It is 1.47 and 0.62 and therefore carburetor is a very, you can say, significant variable in forming the cluster. Okay. The next plot which we have to go is silhouette plot. Basically, it's a graphical technique in which each cluster is based on the comparison of its separation and tightness. Now, what we, uh, this plot will generate, uh, rather it can compare three clusters and it will tell you that which cluster is strong in comparison to others. So what it generates, let's see first. So for this, you will require a package that is a cluster, activate the library cluster, run it. On right hand side, you can see the silhouette plot is generated. Now this width, you just see the width. It is given by this number 0.6. This width is given by 0.31. This width is given by 0.3. So it this number tells me that how many cases are there in first cluster, how many cases are there in second cluster, and how many cases are there in third cluster. Now, which cluster is very strong? For that, this width figure, you have to compare with the average width. If this number is more, then you will say that this, this silhouette or rather this cluster formation is much more strong in comparison to others. Here, this number is 0.6 and it is more than 0.42, which is average silhouette. And therefore, this cluster is very strong. This is 0.31 and it is less than average. So, moderate and this is very weak 0.30 another thing which we have to observe is that the case number six which you can see it is you can say not contributing in on the contrary it is negatively uh, it is a negative case or rather it is an outlier in forming the cluster case number six now you can also carry out uh, the cluster analysis by using the wards method so ward observed one thing in 1963 that all the previous algorithms there was a very heavy loss of information while using this algorithm and to overcome he came up with another algorithm and that's a wards method right and how to do this let's go in our scripts we'll write down distance method will be now ward d i'll run it and now I'll get another uh, plot, just a minute, plot, uh, let me activate it, first of all, run, now we will have to run this command, uh, hc.w, it's just a name. The real algorithm is here, edge cluster distance, which we have already cal calculated from here, the previous one, distance. Then we will specify method is ward. Then we will run hc.w. Now the interesting thing is the next algorithm, rect.hclust, hc.w, k is equal to five, five clusters, and it will give me very meaningful uh, output in comparison to the previous one. Uh, just a minute. So I'll, I've made some correction. See, hc.w, edge class distance method is equal to ward d. Then you run plot hc.w, run, and then you run this rect.edge class hc.w, k is equal to 5 and border rate. And it will give me 5 clusters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now there is one library, a. When you will activate this library, apart from this dendrograms, there are there are another ways of representing dendrograms. The command line will be plot s dot philo hc dot c, which we have uh, already uh, calculated hc dot c from here. We are just using this this thing only. 
hc.c type cladogram size of the text is 0.6 label offset is 0.5 when you will run it you will get this type of dendrograms these are another ways of another advanced ways of representing the cluster analysis then plot as dot philo hc dot c type unrooted so it will give me the t tree and root style of dendrogram plot as dot philo as hc dot c type fan so it will be give me the fan chart this will give me the radial chart now there is one library pv cluster when i will activate this pv cluster and when I will run TMT, well, the simple, we, I don't have to do anything now, just transposing the empty cars data. So TMT, T empty cars, run it. You'll have to transpose it, this data. And then I'll just fit it. HC1, PV cluster, TMT, cars, method is what? Met, uh, method distance is Euclidean. And just see on right hand side, HC1, just a minute, let me run it. Let me run this. Yeah, let it bootstrap properly. So this will give me, you can say, the stables estimate and therefore it's doing a bootstrapping. You can see on your right hand side, the plot which it has generated, right? It's giving me much more information in comparison to the previous algorithms. Okay, still there is one more library. That's a library FPC. It gives me the cluster formation in the form of Eclipse. First of all, activate the library FPC. Run it. Then, calculate the k-means. Okay, what's a k-means? Let's try to understand what's a k-means. Now the k-means cluster was given by McQueen in 1967. In this algorithm, say for example, randomly uh, one centroid is assumed in all this cluster and every time the iteration is process is created out and this centroids will go on changing at each iteration. Finally, this algorithm will terminate when minimum squared function is achieved. When this objective function is achieved, the centroid will no longer move further. So we are going to use the same k-means cluster and we are trying to run this k-means algorithm here. For this, the command line is kc, k-means, z, that is a normalized data we will input, library is fpc. What will you, uh, the command line will be plus plot, plot, empty cars, kc dollar cluster, color is true, say it is true, labels is true, lines is zero. Now you can see it gives me the cluster formation based on the centroid so all those cars which are sharing a similar characteristics are in one group this is a second group and this is a third group i can also plot the cluster like this it gives me one 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 and two two three three but more meaningful is this one right so this is all about cluster analysis you can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Moreover, one thing more, all these codes are available in my book. Yeah, this book. In this book, this book is available on Amazon.in as well as Amazon.com. All these codes are very readily available. Thank you to all of you.